Hello there, my name is Aaron Parr and join me as we travel back and look at the history of Pembrokeshire. <laughs> At our first stop, we are visiting a small town with a large history called Kiru. The original castle was built in 1100 by Gerald of Windsor. However, it is believed there was a settlement here long before this. Only one section of Gerald's earth and timber castle remains today, the central tower. In the late 15th century, the castle was greatly improved and extended by Sir Rhys Thomas. He altered both the east and the west ranges and was responsible for many of the bath stone windows and other features. On to our next historic site, which sits right on the coast of Pembrokeshire, St. Govan's Chapel. The history of the chapel is that one day St. Govan was walking along the south coast of the country. He was pursued by a gang of bloodthirsty pirates. Miraculously, he was running away from these pirates and a cleft opened up in the cliff above him. He was able to tuck away inside and survive the hunt from the pirates. The chapel was built in the 13th century on what is known now as St. Govan's Head. The chapel is also on the grounds of Castle Martin, which is a shooting range for the military. The chapel is built on the side of a limestone cliff. The building measures 20 by 12 feet with walls constructed out of limestone and consists of two chambers.
our next location we are visiting St Anne's Hairs Lighthouse. St Anne's Hairs Low Lighthouse marks Milford Haven's entrance and is located on the site of the earliest lighthouse in Wales. The earliest light was a chapel in St Anne's dating back to the Middle Ages, built to commemorate to Henry Tudor's landing. The original light consisted of a coal brazier tended to by a monk or a hermit. When Henry VIII dissolved the monasteries in 1536, the church light was extinguished and not lit again until 1660. Trinity House permitted local merchants to collect voluntary payments from passing ships for the upkeep of the lighthouse. Following accusations of extortion, the corporation withdrew their permission in 1667 and the light went out once more. Trinity House granted Joseph Allen, the landowner, a lease sometime later in 1713. Two leading lights were built, the Low Lighthouse and the High Lighthouse. When kept in line, these lights guided their ships clear of Lineley Head, Angle and the Crows and Toes Rocks. Welcome to the smallest city in UK, St David's. The city sits in the southwest of Wales in Pembrokeshire. When you enter the city centre, you are faced with Stone Age buildings with the sense of a small village which is not a city centre. The cathedral was built roughly in the years between 1180 and 1220. The cathedral has had many renovations changing aspects of the cathedral but kept in its place of worship. For example, electricity was added in the 19th century, there was also a restaurant added in the early years of 2020. St David is buried within the cathedral's walls in the centre. You can go see his tomb, which sits behind the organ in the centre of the cathedral. The tomb is made from a stone with gold markings on top. There are many tombs throughout the cathedral, inside and out. Welcome to the highest peak of Pembrokeshire, the Baselli Hills. The Baselli Hills are known from two different names, the Baselli Hills and the Baselli Mountains. However, they are both the same location. The Baselli Hills are, com are a combination of hills that are in the same place. Each one has a different history and ancient ruins. Dotted across the mountains are prehistoric remains, burial cairns dated back to the Bronze Age and Iron Age hill forts. The hills are home to a wide range of plants and intervertebrates, some to be rare. Amongst the hills, amongst the hills are, is placed a slate mine, which you can go see from the mountains we have gone up today.
Wow, look at that. A huge history Pembrokeshire has to offer. On to the next location.